Good. So, welcome everybody. This is SharePoint Developer Development Ecosystem slash SharePoint PMP Community Call, and this is the December 2017 edition. So, within this monthly community calls, we'll go through what has happened within the SharePoint development uh, site from a guidance and sample and community perspective within the last month. So, there's quite a lot of actually again to go through during this month because there has been a lot of lot of uh, changes and improvements in our documentation and videos and samples and all of that. We'll also have three different demos today. Uh, so let me actually jump into the uh, agenda slide. So we have three different demos. Uh, like, like typically within the community calls, we'll start with a, let's say, 15 to 20 minute summary of what has happened within the November 2017. And if there's any questions, comments uh, during the call, please use the IM window, the chat window in the Skype. Uh, so I would ask that people would keep themselves uh, unmuted. Uh, or sorry, mute it during the call. And then if you have any questions, let's use the time window for uh, having a discussion. Now, quickly uh, walking through the summary on the November 2017 release. Uh, let's start with a November 2017 uh, number. So we did have a 148,000 watch minutes uh, in a YouTube channel. So um, we're seeing increased interest on the videos around the SharePoint development, which is a good thing. So people are finding the YouTube channel. Um, and the more and more we'll link these videos to the guidance in the docs.microsoft.com, we see more uh, uptake on the views as well. If there's something missing, by the way, for example, from a video perspective, just please let us know using the social media channels and we can uh, figure out how to get stuff recorded uh, for you. We had 24,000 views in YouTube, uh, so 24,000 divided 148 divided 24 so will give you the average uh, watch minute uh, on a one video. We had uh, 43,000 uh, unique visitors on GitHub uh, and 625,000 views in docs.microsoft.com, so which is actually significant leap from the previous month. So on docs.microsoft.com, that SharePoint and Dev section, uh, we're seeing a massive increase of views uh, on that side uh, due reasons or another, which is a good thing. Now, uh, on the PMP reusable components usage, so if you think about the, the PMP, it, well, well, a few years back it only meant uh, PMP PowerShell and PMP Core. We've been always tracking the usage of these components, and these components uh, are now used in 5.5, uh, well, generated 5.5 billion requests uh, during last month, and they were used in 8,100 tenants. Obviously, if you think about SharePoint Framework or SharePoint Add-ins, those are used in a much wider spectrum, but the those numbers are not actually um, uh, public, so we can't actually share all of those details. And the most used capability from an uh, open source community perspective uh, was again the provisioning engine. So using that, either using the PMP PowerShell or using the uh, CSM uh, core as the platform. Now, a few announcements uh, and a few things before we go through kind of a summary on the monthly uh, changes and what actually has happened. A few things which I'm repeating in every single monthly call. So all of our documentation has been already moved. All of the active documentation has been already moved to AKMS uh, SP Dev Docs. So this is redirecting to the docs.microsoft.com slash SharePoint slash dev, where we have then guidance on the SharePoint framework, uh, REST APIs, SharePoint add-ins, webhooks, and all of that. So this is the location. Uh, where we keep on updating the documentation. And if there's any issues or challenges around the documentation, uh, for example, you some uh, some document you don't like, uh, that document you can absolutely contribute back by submitting a pull, re pull request uh, to the GitHub, or alternatively, please use our issue list. So AKMS SP Dev Issues uh, will uh, land you on the SP Dev Docs issue list. And this is really meant to be a way for you to let SharePoint engineering directly in Redmond to know that there's an issue either on the documentation or there's a potential issue in SharePoint framework. So for example, or in any other things in, uh, for example, in SharePoint Online. So if you're running into random unexpected situations in SharePoint framework and you, you, have, you potentially think that there might be a bug within a SharePoint framework, please use this issue list rather than comment section in the uh, SP Dev doc, oh, sorry, in the docs.microsoft.com so we get things tracked. And um, in the tutorials, for example, in our documentation, we have now added a guidance that please, 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 if you find any issues in the documentation, go to this SP Dev Docs issue list in GitHub and submit an issue with the repro uh, details so we can actually know what wasn't working 
and what should be resolved. And this is also a great location to uh, suggest also changes. So if you have, for example, if you have, for example, uh, suggestions on improvements of a documentation or, or any other things, this would be the potential location for that. Where would we, uh, there's a good question from Christian, where would, should we report issues with the site collection app catalog? This is the location. Running any issues in SharePoint Online or development platform, AKMS, SPDev issues, uh, issue list in SPDev docs, please submit an issue there. Tell me, what, tell us what's wrong. Not just me, there's other people behind of this as well. Tell us what's wrong and also the reproducible steps and, and we can uh, help you as fast as possible. So absolutely a viable solution. Uh, so, and in the case of site collection app catalog, just super curious on, on knowing if there's some uh, issues or potential issues uh, with that one, which Christian is pointing out in the window. Um, cool. Um, Good. Uh, other things. So uh, a few different things which I wanted to uh, raise or uh, raise for the discussion and increase the awareness uh, within the monthly community call perspective before we go to the demo side. Uh, during uh, November, we released Office 365 CLI. For those who haven't actually uh, seen this live or haven't seen the blog post in the Twitter or Facebook, which uh, we posted a few weeks ago, this is really around enabling you, for example, to manipulate tenant Office 365 tenant uh, CDN options uh, using a non-Microsoft platform. So the PowerShell, SharePoint Online PowerShell, SharePoint Online Management Shell is targeted for Windows platform and that PowerShell doesn't work in, in the Mac or in the Linux platform. Now there's quite a lot of developers who only have a Mac or they have a Linux. So the Office 365 CLA is, is really there to enable those people who don't have a Windows to manipulate these settings in a tenant level. or if you are a Windows user, you can use this tool to configure your tenant level settings as well, as long as you are obviously a tenant administrator. But um, using this kind of a tool, you don't need to leave from the console experience if you prefer to be in the console experience and as, as you move along uh, or as you do your development. So AKMS uh, Office 365 CLI will redirect you to the documentation page where we'll explain um, what is it and how does it work and how to get started uh, with an Office 365 CLI. A few other things which I wanted to pinpoint on the changes related on uh, uh, SharePoint uh, on SharePoint development within the last past month. This is, isn't precisely on a SharePoint development, but it is uh, heavily on a SharePoint development. So SharePoint uh, PowerShell documentation has moved to the docs.microsoft.com and this is where we will find the open source SharePoint management shell, SharePoint online and the PMP command line documentation. We are working on an improvements on this documentation as well. So we are absolutely aware that there are uh, issues and challenges around the quality of the documentation in these command lines. But now that we are already in the new and a much more flexible platform, we can make those changes uh, in the future in a more reliable way. AKMS SP, uh, SP PowerShell uh, is an AKMS address to land there. Uh, this is a great um, location to find on-premises documentation, SharePoint Online documentation, and also BMP PowerShell documentation from one location. Uh, and like I said, we're working on uh, documentation improvements for all of those uh, based on the feedback what we're getting from the community as well. What else has happened within the last month, within the November timeframe? So we did release quite a lot of new videos and, and PMP webcasts. So AKMS SP PMP videos will lend you to our YouTube channel. So we did have four uh, specific uh, webcasts. So we did have a webcast around ALM APIs, uh, which was uh, in the November. We did have a webcast around transforming uh, your SharePoint Online uh, classic JavaScript customizations to modern SharePoint framework customizations. We did have a webcast around the asset packaging, which is the one which went live uh, earlier this uh, this uh, this week. We also had few PMP short videos. Uh, you can find them from this location as well, and uh, Nuke videos. The Nuket videos is a new thing uh, which we're starting uh, to do more and more in the future. So these are videos which are intended to be 30 seconds to 60 seconds and embedded on the article in the documentation. So the whole point of these Nuket videos is that if somebody is looking into just to get resolved on, for example, how to get started on Office 365 CLI, how to connect to your tenant, that is the video which will show that and nothing more than that. So it's a super simplified video. We also released a new version uh, and new 
new setup of our tutorial videos. So there's a new version of the Getting Started SharePoint, uh, with SharePoint Framework tutorial videos, which we have a written format in the docs.microsoft.com, but then we have a video format uh, in, the, in the YouTube channel. Now, um, <laughs> yeah, well, there's a good comment from Russell. Nougat videos, I thought Nougat is dead. The Nougat is definitely not dead. Uh, Nougat is absolutely alive and feeling well uh, in the managed code side. And we will still continue writing managed code in Azure, which is connecting to the SharePoint online. So, good. Um, <laughs> or uh, McDonald's nuggets is always a, an option. Now, on the most viewed samples in the November 2017, uh, we are uh, number one sample uh, was, uh, well, sample or most views uh, was tracked last month, uh, the PMP site score component, uh, which is to see some extension on top of uh, the SharePoint Online season. And then on the, uh, right after that one, the, the classic SharePoint UI responsive, which is transforming the classic CRL.master to be responsive. Um, we are luckily seeing slightly less and less interest on that one, which means that people are gradually adapting also the modern ways of, uh, or the modern SharePoint sites. Um, and to be fair, the SharePoint UI responsive packets isn't 100% bulletproof, bulletproof either, but it shows how to make a Seattle.master responsive. Uh, there was quite a lot of interest on the GDPR Activity Hub, which is a great kick, uh, kind of a starter kit uh, for building SharePoint online solutions using SharePoint framework. So uh, done by Paolo Pialorossi, um, and it also uh, shows a business case, case around the GDPR uh, European EU. European Union GDPR uh, legal changes, uh, which, by the way, is something which every single US-based company should have a quick look if they do any business with the European uh, employees uh, or European other companies, which is an interesting change, which is going to be active uh, during next year. PMP tools, uh, the search query tool from Mikhail Svensson, absolutely good to see that one uh, pretty high. The SharePoint CRUD is a great uh, SPFX solution sample, showing how to get started on the CRUD operation. So create, read, update, and delete operations with SharePoint framework uh, web pods. And I'm not going to read all of these through. Uh, just to pinpoint some of these, and PMP JS Core, uh, it's getting quite a nicely hits as well. Overall, we had 99,000 views in our GitHub samples, so we're tracking these uh, using this kind of a tracking image solution, so we understand how which of the samples are more popular than other ones. Our, uh, you can actually see from the view count that there is a pretty long tail um, on the samples, because we do have like 300 samples in a GitHub. Good. Um, Quickly, um, so on the community side, if you've never been participating on this call, uh, there are multiple ways of engaging with the SharePoint dev ecosystem and the community work within the SharePoint development. So easiest way to uh, get an answer potentially to your question is to use the SharePoint developer group in the Microsoft Tech community. So AKMS SPPMP community uh, or the long address underneath the Microsoft Tech community. And that is a, a really a simple forum where you can ask questions and then uh, get answers to your questions from the community side. Then we do have a bi-weekly special interest group calls for SharePoint framework and JavaScript development is one, and another one is a for SharePoint and general development. And these are basically on every meeting every single, well, bi-weekly on Thursdays, which means that since they are both bi-weekly, every single Thursday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, which is uh, 3 p.m. GMT time in Europe, um, there is a, a community call where we will have always time for Q&A and a more open discussion. These monthly community calls, which is the last uh, kind of area to, to engage, is more around us telling what has happened within the last month. Um, and the next monthly community goals, obviously, is in the second Tuesday of January 2018, which is the 9th of January. So in, in any case, if you download any of these invites, they are recurrent invites, they will be recurrent until the end of June 2018. Now, uh, quickly, what has happened in 2017 uh, December release, or what has happened, uh, or what has included in the GitHub and samples uh, during past months? There's a lot of stuff here. I'm going to be super fast. Uh, we have like eight new 
uh, client-side web part samples uh, or five client-side web part samples and extensions um, uh, which are showing different things. Uh, there's multiple Skype examples. There's a really cool uh, web part uh, examples which have been demonstrating on the special interest groups as well. On the tutorial side, uh, there's a three new tutorials around how to transform your JavaScript, SharePoint Online JavaScript customizations from a user custom action uh, or JS link perspective to the modern ways of customizing SharePoint Online. So your customizations are supported also in the modern experiences. Cool stuff, uh, which will help people to uh, learn how to do that uh, in the in the SharePoint Online. On the sample side, there's reusable controls uh, on the web part title uh, is in the is a new thing in the reusable controls that's coming out relatively soon or will be released today or tomorrow. Uh, there's a five or six different column formatting samples uh, which are showing how to build column formatting definitions uh, using the SharePoint Online column formatting uh, platform. On the guidance side, uh, there's a there's a lot of new articles available uh, around uh, the different uh, SharePoint Online customization uh, options. On the core component and engine updates, there's a lot of changes on the core component. We will see a lot of these actually live in the Paolo's demo slightly later on this call, and same applies on the PowerShell side. So there's new commandlets related on the PM modern page uh, modifications uh, in the SharePoint sites, and this will make make for example enable you to create additional modern pages in SharePoint using scripts or PowerShell scripts and then modify what's on those pages uh, using the, the latest uh, capabilities in the PMP uh, site's core component. We also introduced a preview version of the new provisioning engine template, uh, which is supporting ALM uh, activities. So as part of this creation of a, of a template, you can actually apply um, add-ins or solutions to the site as well. Uh, you can also apply tenant level settings. Uh, you can also apply, oh, there's new attributes for client-side pages and new attributes for navigation, which are now supported. Uh, Paolo will show some of these uh, during his uh, demo as well. So a lot of, lot of uh, great improvements on the core and engine side. On the CLI and JavaScript core side, uh, JavaScript core side is evolving fast as well. So there's additional support for SharePoint ALM APIs, which went live earlier uh, December, uh, earlier November. On Office 365 CLI side, we've already seen two different versions or additional versions around the ALM API support as well, and also additional customization support there. Now, on the list of people who contributed, I think we actually did a record uh, list uh, this month. Uh, so this is like, uh, uh, well, 40, 45, 50 uh, community members uh, who contributed uh, during uh, November. And thank you for your contributions. This is how, why every single other, uh, every single other product or service in Microsoft uh, company is um, envious about the SharePoint community because we actually help each other by contributing and being active in the community side. So helping by providing components and samples and documentation updates or helping by providing and having a discussion in a GitHub or in a tech community or in a social media. So thank you, thank you so much for your contributions. On the company side, uh, we absolutely had the largest company uh, participant uh, side as well. So if from the people on the previous page, these are the companies which we have a permission to show the logo. And this is the largest list of companies we've never had in the PMP side. So it's nice to see the interest of contributing to the open source area growing month by month by month, which is a great thing uh, and great thing to see. So thank you. Thank you so much uh, for allowing your employees to contribute uh, on the open source initiative and, and making other people succeed as well, because that's how the SharePoint community will succeed and that's how the SharePoint business will keep on growing. Thank you for that. Uh, on the Microsoft side, a relatively typical list of people. Uh, so we have a technical writers, we have PMP core team members, a Splat uh, or SPFX engineering people participating on the on the journey as well. So thank you uh, from a Microsoft people side as well. But a lot of people have contributed on the on the GitHub and our tooling within the past month. Now 
finally getting to the demo side. This is getting more and more difficult every single month because there's more and more stuff happening uh, on the SharePoint development side. Now, we will start with a, a Daniel Wuss uh, from a demo perspective. And obviously during the demos and everything else, feel free to use time window um, for questions. And if you have any other questions related on what we already went through, feel free to use time windows for those as well. I'll concentrate on that one as we move along to the demo. So Daniel will start, then we'll go to Irvin around the new PMP PowerShell commandlets on the modern page handling, and then we'll go to Paolo around the new schema and provisioning engine support. But Daniel, we checked the audio, it's fine for you already. Yeah, hi, hi, thanks, great to be here. Cool, and let's see that the screen sharing hopefully works as well. Crossing fingers. Okay. Let's hope this works out. Let's see. It starts loading three dots. Okay. And here we go. And we can see uh, screen sharing. All good. So, Daniel, please take it away. Great. Thanks. Um, my name is Daniel Lees. I'm CTO at Skybo, and um, I've been like the father of uh, Artavia Rich Forms, which is Skybo Rich Forms now. So I've got a lot of interest in SharePoint Forms stuff. And um, of course, it was a great opportunity to try out and see how to implement the new modern forms in a web part, um, SharePoint SPFX web part, using React. So um, I'll just go through a short demo to show you what the web part does. Um, it's all in the samples in GitHub now, so um, anybody can get the code and have a look after it as well. Um, we'll look at the code afterwards in detail. So if um, I'm on a page and I'd like a nice web part um, for adding some items, for example, I'll get my new list form web part, and we can configure it. Say, um, share your idea. And can select which list. These here are all the SharePoint lists, like ideas, for example, and what type. We have um, new display edits. People in SharePoint will know what they mean. And we even have a chance to set a URL um, which we will be visiting after um, saving this form. So what we have here is actually a web part that renders the whole list form generically um, just by the information it gets from the list. And it doesn't stop there. We can even um, move around fields, delete fields if we don't need it. And um, it's just showing the form in the modern page views. So let's try it out. So I'll just publish that and see what happens. So crazy idea. Um, just some idea. We even have lookups, for example, and dates. Um, category can't live without. Now, as you can see, it's been saved. It's a normal um, update to the list. It's added it to the list. I've redirected to the second page. This is what I actually configured in the redirect URL and passed in the ID of the newly created. So there you have a, um, um, the, a different form. If we look at it, it's just uh, basic um, content up here, and this is, again, a list form, which is configured to show the edit type of this form. So I guess you can make the um, nice workflows for editing um, ideas or adding tickets or whatever. You'll have tons of ideas. But the main part, actually, was um, just to find out how we can handle this um, custom forms in um, SharePoint framework web parts using React. So um, let's have a look at the background. Whoa. So 
So if we look at the codes, um, it's actually fairly standard stuff you have. You'll have the web parts um, here, so we have the list form web parts. And this is more or less what we have in, um, in all our samples, um, with the client web parts, um, rendering React. So this list form web part is just the base client side web part. And it uh, handles the property pane, it handles um, the configuration, everything. We can see the fields here are also um, shown depending, for example, on the control mode. So this is um, where you actually uh, configure all the property pane stuff. Now, it um, has the properties as we know it, um, and as we've seen in, the, in here, for example, and it has one extra field configuration. This is where the whole ordering and which fields are shown is actually stored. So this is actually in the web part in the configuration. Now moving down, the list form web part will render up here. Well, actually the core is that it will render a list form. And the list form is where all the magic happens. So um, if we look at the list form in the components directory in here, this is actually the central part where the state is held, where the schema is loaded, the data is loaded, and all the fields um, are rendered. So if we look at the render, I won't go into deep because there's a lot of uh, things like notifications, errors here um, that are rendered. But the main point is actually the field rendering. And here for each field, um, the appropriate components are rendered. So we have a SP form field um, control or component. It's also a React component um, that is being rendered. Depending on, on if we're in the design mode, we will wrap it in a draggable component so that the draggable com component is actually what um, is available here. So if we have that, this is in design mode. Um, if we look at the runtime mode, you won't have the dragging anymore because it's only in design mode. So that's... Um, the main part for the whole list form. And the um, central part for the field is actually the SP form field, which um, controls which components, depending on the field type, we are going to render. So we have here like a, an array where we list um, which field type will generate which form, uh, which field component. and same here for display and for edit, and the rendering is actually done in SPF form, a form field rend, um, in a um, component, stateless component. So all the state is really kept in the list form outside, but this will just render which one uh, we need. So if we have, for example, display forms, it will get the display field type mappings and use them to probe control. Now there is one. Um, special wrapper called form field, which will um, actually render all the label and the description, which is more or less on every field. So all the stuff around here, title, or even um, when we have the error message, stuff like this will be rendered here. So this form field does the label and just the past in input field will be reused. So, um, yeah, everything's uh, UI fabric. The dragging, the draggable is implemented with um, React DND. So the UI fabric is for all the con components, the controls you see. The draggable component is implemented using React DND, which is probably the most widespread drag and drop um, uh, library in React space. Um, so these are all here. You can definitely use it also in any other areas. It's quite nice. Um, maybe if we go into the field itself when the inputs are rendered, so this is what the uh, field, form field will be doing. Um, let's take, for example, the 
field text. So this is just um, UI Fabric text field it's rendering. So um, it looks office style, all that's handled by UI Fabric. Um, one thing we have to note is that if we, what in React, when working with forms, um, it's actually suggested to have controlled components instead of uncontrolled components. Uncontrolled components are components that will keep uh, its state in the DOM. So, so actually, like a normal input field has this value, and uh, you only, if you're not using React, you'll wait until the save button is done, and then off it goes, uh, getting the value from the DOM element itself. Now, in React, we use controlled components, or at least that's suggested, which means that we uh, we only pass um, the props into these components, and we never keep the state inside the, the field itself. So if we have like an input field like text field, we always pass the value from the top, and anything that's changed is actually propagated to the um, list form in this case, and the state is kept in the list form and only ever um, updated um, down through the properties into the text field through the value. So it's important to make sure that um, these controls, UI Fabric, uh, sort of react um, if value isn't set. It will uh, say, okay, this is a non-controlled component. To make it controlled, always set the value. Anyway, um, one big area as well is, of course, how do we get the data? Um, and we have the services here. So in the, the list form actually calls this list form service, gets the schemas from there, the data from, for, for the form, there's an update item and a create item. So the list form actually has the service to call, and in here we're using REST API. And what I've actually done is just checked what out-of-box modern SharePoint um, forms are doing. So um, this is more or less exactly the methods that are called there. And the great thing is you get all the information you need. So there will be like um, some of the schema will contain even the, the field, val uh, the lookup values. So you don't have to re-query just to get the lookup values, all that stuff. So we have the render list data stream used for getting the schemas. Now, Daniel, um, Daniel, on explicitly on that one. So that that's sorry for jumping on this one. This this is such a classic requirement. So let's reiterate on what you're saying. So, can you go to the site and show the look of what you have in practice, and then we can come back on this one, um, because for you, I, I know that you're super familiar of of the stuff, but I think people don't necessarily really understand what are we talking here. That list of product is not actually a choice field. It is a lookup field, right? That's a lookup field, so it's um, actually from the products list. Um, so these items are rendered into this drop-down uh, UF Fabric field. And I, I can show you in the code how it looks. So when I have the, um, the lookup field itself, um, yeah, I'm on the wrong one, down here. So if we look at the SPA field lookup edit, here you can see it gets the options. Now the options are actually already in the field schema I'm getting. And this field schema is, is what I'm retrieving, not just by getting the, the normal fields um, schema, if you just uh, iterate through the fields of a list, it's actually using this a list form service render list State a stream exactly, yes. and um, I don't have a prepared uh, query there, but um, or the, I can't, the request response. But in that response, you'll have a list of choices, so you don't have to do anything to just uh, get this choices here. 
And the reason why I'm jumping on this one, one of the, the for example, in user voice and in, in the social media, quite often people are asking, why can't we, why don't you help us on resolving the lookup field values on the lists? Uh, well, actually we do. Um, that is, as long as you use that REST API, we are actually giving you the lookup values as well for your code. And that is a great, great, great thing to actually cover within this call, because I don't think people are aware of that REST API endpoint. Yeah, that's definitely very useful. And I mean, the way to find out how um, SharePoint does it is just uh, run it in your browser and go into the developer uh, plane and uh, check the network. And that's how I find out what it's going, going on there. Um, so this is actually not very well documented, but then uh, easily you can find out what it's doing, it's doing there. Yep. Um, yeah. So the whole list form service is the important part where you can see how we're getting the data and also the validate update list documents for the update, and it's using the add validate update list document using path for creating uh, an item. So let's ramp up um, this thing about uh, forms in uh, React is that we have a different concept than normally with data binding. We're passing everything down from from the top, um, keeping the state uh, high up and passing into all the um, fields at the same time. So actually a good example to see this is if I just add a um, – extra field here you haven't shown you I can even add a field multiple times here so if I add this field here um, you can see this isn't done by some data binding magic it's actually just this control um, reporting to the list form the fields that have changed and the properties are always passed down the same for each field so it looks um, as if they are connected to each other but actually it's just the list form so this is really nice concept in um, React and uh, definitely worth to keep these controlled components. Absolutely. Yeah. And and Daniel, just to kind of a you're you're so uh, easily just running through the whole thing, but just explaining the value of this web part is that it's a, such a typical requirement that hey, I want to request some feedback from my end users and I will need to have a form and then I need to be able to re have a redirection form. There we go. That's that's what this web part is doing. Yeah, and this sample is, of course, a great uh, place to also check um, how you could do a custom form, which probably um, doesn't just render flat. Um, you can you reuse these components, reuse this structure, and there's a lot there already, so you can yeah do any form, SharePoint form you want. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Great stuff, great stuff. It's too bad that we are running uh, always low on time on this course that we can't actually deep dive on the on the more on this one. But super, super polished uh, and uh, and a great, great, great experience. But thank you, Daniel, for this one. Now I think we were planning to have Irvin next uh, on the on the demo side. Irvin, can you hear us? Yep. Okay, cool. Yes, I can. Uh, so let's share my screen. Flip on your screen. And thank you, Daniel, for a great, great, great demo. Uh, I think super, super valuable for showing how to, how to make that happen. You're welcome. You should be able to see it. Uh, it's loading, and we got it. Stockholm. Surprise, okay, surprise. Cool. <laughs> right. So I, I want to do first a little housekeeping call uh, or topic when it comes to the power. Um, we, we had to change the um, certificate, and I, I will spare you all the details that we had to go through for signing the, the, the certificate we used to sign the, the command list, but also um, the NuGet packages with. But it means that if you upgrade, if you used uh, until now, um, I will switch to PowerShell to show you. If you use the upgrades module uh, to, uh, like, say, name uh, SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online, 
and you execute this, you might run into an error message stating that the certificate is different. Uh, and that's correct. The old certificate was different from the one we're using right now. Um, so the way forward here is to first uninstall PowerShell. So you uninstall the module, uh, uninstall module, um, ins come on, install module, and it's important that you specify all versions. Um, because if you do upgrades, it will actually install just a new version side by side. So if you do all, all the versions, it will remove the full um, PowerShell module from your system, and then you install the module again, and then <clears throat> you will use the new certificate, and you will not get the error message that the uh, certificate is different. Just a little um, remark here. So what I will show today is uh, a couple of new commandlets that, uh, that we released um, uh, which help you to um, manipulate modern pages. And I, I've set up a very simple demo page here with a uh, web map, uh, with a Bing map on it uh, pointing to my hometown. And I'll show you a bit what you can do with, the, with these new commandlets. So um, we have a commandlet that allows you to retrieve all the um, commandlets or the, the web parts. And we call it components because it's not only applying to web parts. There's also like a text component you can add to a page. So it's gets PNP client side component. And we'll, it asks you for the page. We'll list you all the, the web parts or text components uh, on the on the page. <clears throat> and right now you see there's only one web part in here. And I will add a new web part, uh, PNP uh, or text in this case, client side text. Um, on the page demo, and the text will be hello, nothing else. And if we go to the page and reload this page, there's my hello there. So if I retrieve this um, list of, oh, let me do it the right way, page demo. There you see the two uh, components on the page, and you see that the text component is now located in the second position of that page. So if I want to move that one up to the first position, I can say move PNP client side component, page demo, instance ID, this is this ID. And then I say position, and move it to the first position. Similar thing I can do is to move this client side web part, and I'll do that at the same time. Copy this. And I can actually move it to, for instance, the second column. So now my page should be completely reordered. So this text should be up there, and the, 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 web, the map should be at the right side. So if I reload the page, there we go. I moved the text up here, I moved the map to the right side. So it's very simple now to move uh, components around on your page and change the ordering uh, of those components on your page. By the way, Urban, while you're doing that, sorry for interrupting, just to make sure that mm -hmm. everybody understands, all of these capabilities are available for code as well. So this is not just yes. for PowerShell. So if no. you're a developer and you're like, no, no, I don't want to see PowerShell. No, no, the, all of this is capable. You can do this for, uh, using code as well. Yeah, yeah, this, this works purely because we enabled this functionality in PMP Core. Yes. So if you use PMP Core, you can do this from code too. Uh, it's identical. Um, so um, sometimes I saw the question popping up so every now and then. Uh, we would like to set the title of the web part. And that's uh, this title. Now, the, the challenge with uh, with modern web parts is with SPFX solutions um, is that um, the title is not a standard property. It is something that the web part provides, unlike the classic web parts, which all had a title property. Modern web parts don't necessarily have that. Uh, some of do, some do, some don't. So where is this information stored? So this information is stored in the properties of the web part itself. And if I uh, show you how to set, the, in this case for the map, the value there. So if I say get PNP client side component, page demo instance ID, and we're going for the web part here. So we're copying this, uh, let me copy it completely, and put this in the variable. So now I have the web part, and here is a properties JSON string. And here you see the title there. So if I copy this whole JSON block here, launch Notepad, paste it in, change the title to Hello Stockholm, copy this again to my clipboard. Then I put it into a uh, variable 
properties, uh, get clipboards. So you see if I have a look in here, there is my new JSON here, and you see the hello stop and text in there for the title. Now I can say set PNP client side web part, page demo identity, and that's again this ID. Properties JSON, properties. Press enter. If we go to the page, and there we have set the title of the specific web part. We have similar command lists for removing web parts. Um, we have command lists already for adding sections and that kind of stuff, so that's all there. Um, uh, but these new ones allow you to easily move from left to right, up and down, within the column, etc., etc., etc. And as Vesa said, this is available for code too. So if you want a pure CSAM solution or a C Sharp solution, it's there for you to consume. Um, now another last thing, the last thing before I hand over to uh, Paolo. Is this um, the one more he, thing? One more. This thing? is the one more thing. It's not a demo. I'm sorry. It's just a yeah. sad story. We, uh, we found an issue with the current dot one release that we released yesterday. We found an issue. There will be a dot two coming. Um, if you are a developer and you have Visual Studio and everything installed, you will not notice this issue. But if you run it completely standalone, you will run into this issue. Uh, and for that reason, we will. Um, introduce a dot two, which means we have to go through the signing process again, and that is a very complex process. It's not as easy as it used to be, so it will take a bit, but uh, there will be a dot two. So if so, you run into that issue, revert to the previous version. Yeah, so Irvin, to be fair, you uh, you understood the one more thing in a, in a wrong way, because typically one more thing is like, oh my God, there's a one more thing. I know, I, <laughs> I know, I totally got that, but that's unfortunately not the no, no, that's thing fine. I can that's answer. fine. So, Okay, let's be super clear. So on the PowerShell sign, we have identified a bug, and we'll address that bug later today, early tomorrow on our time frame. So there will be yeah. a new version of the of the PMP PowerShell for December. Um, and obviously, yeah. if we found out any critical bugs during December, well, there will be new versions still. Um, the next version is then in January signed. But unfortunately, I think this relates on the on the signing and with the, the fact that we sign our stuff slightly differently now. So in this month, we had a small compli complications with this stuff, but all good. Um, should we yep. change to Paula then, Irving? Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Thanks. Okay. And, and thanks, Irving. Great, great, great demo. And hopefully people understand the power of that one because you can standardize the, the web parts and pages in your sites easily now remotely. And that's a great, great, great thing as well. But now, Paula, I think you have the one more thing uh, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Welcome and hello everybody from Brescia too, just because Erwin was welcoming people from Stockholm. <laughs> but okay, uh, let's have a demo about uh, the new capabilities that we introduced uh, in the uh, PMP provisioning engine. First of all, from a schema perspective and later uh, from an engine's perspective. So, uh, this month uh, we uh, released the uh, 2018-01 schema version. We are forward thinkers, so we are already in January now. <laughs> but we released the new schema, which is right now under preview. In fact, if you go to the uh, repo of the PMP provisioning schema, you would be able to see that uh, we have uh, the current default implemented version, which is 2017.05, which is the one we are using since, uh, uh, I think, was uh, July this year. And we have the current approved version, which is the 2018.01, which will be the upcoming one uh, for the next uh, month. Right now, if you use the provisioning engine, whether using uh, uh, code in uh, uh, .NET or using PowerShell, you can can use the, uh, the upcoming new version of the schema, but you will have to make an explicit choice to use it. Otherwise, you will fall back on the default one, which is still the 2017-05. So let me try to explain you what we introduced in the new schema version. And so I will go to the uh, Visual Studio project in which I have the schema. And first of all, I want to uh, share with all of you one, I think, really useful information. Since uh, the 2017-05 schema, I started using uh, uh, some additional metadata information in the schema so that you can recognize what is new 
uh, for every single schema version. So, for example, if I search in the XSD file of the latest schema, the uh, uh, annotation, the XSD app info, which will state this has been added with the schema 2019-01, you will see that, for example, we added the tenant element at the uh, provisioning uh, uh, level, at the provisioning template level, or we added uh, some other new elements and attributes, and whenever we have a new element or a new attribute, we have uh, this uh, uh, metadata uh, annotation to make it clear that this is a new capability, a new feature introduced. And so you can use uh, this kind of metadata information to figure out what are the uh, new elements and the new information. So. Now, from the uh, 2018 one perspective, the first addition we made, and let me switch to an XML sample instead of uh, using the XSD, which is, I think, a little bit more complex than needed. But from a provisioning, uh, uh, XML provisioning file perspective, we have a new PMP tenant element in which we do support the PMP app catalog element. Through this one, we can define any package uh, from a SharePoint framework perspective or from a SharePoint team perspective that you want to deploy on the uh, tenant-wide app catalog uh, of your tenant. And as you can see, you can provide the source file of a package that you want to upload and publish, for example, or you can just uh, upload a new item and maybe later on you will publish it. You can even remove uh, uh, an item if you want to uh, just do some maintenance and remove a package that you already installed. If you upload and eventually publish an item, you will have to reference the package uh, uh, file path. On the other side, if you are removing or just publishing, you will need to reference the package ID. Moreover, when you do the uh, upload and publish, you can select if you want to have the skipper feature, skip feature deployment enabled or not, and if you want to overwrite uh, any already existing item. Moreover, we have the content delivery network session still in the tenant uh, uh, element, a child of a tenant element, and through this element, you will be able, not now, but in the uh, very near future, you will be able to automate the provisioning uh, of a content delivery network and of uh, uh, any origin in the public or in the private uh, CDN of your tenant. This is an upcoming feature. It is already defined in the schema, and it will be most likely next month available in the engine as well. Uh, those are the main changes together with the application lifecycle management. So let me search for it, application life cycle management. At the provisioning template level, we introduce the application life cycle management element through which, again, we have a placeholder right now, just a placeholder for the site collection uh, uh, app catalog. Right now, we do not have support for this capability at the ALM APIs level. So, we right now just have the schema, which is ready, and as soon as the ALM APIs in SharePoint Online will be ready too, we will add this functionality to the engine. But we have the apps element, uh, which is again a child of the application lifecycle management, through which we can install, update, or uninstall a package, a, a, so a SharePoint framework package or a SharePoint add-in solution into the target set collection. So. Basically, using a provisioning template, you are able and you will be able to not only do the provisioning of the classic, let me say, classic artifacts like lists, uh, uh, fields, uh, set columns, content types, and so on and so forth, but you will also be able to upload a package and to enable that package in a target site collection so that you will be able to fully automate the provisioning of a site collection or of a site, including any custom uh, add-in or SharePoint framework package that you will need, for example, in your custom pages. So let's let me show you how to use these uh, uh, capabilities uh, uh, using the engine. And to make it easier for you to follow the uh, topic, I will use uh, one more time uh, uh, PowerShell and some command lets in PowerShell. But again, uh, you can do almost the same uh, stuff uh, just using .NET code uh, in uh, uh, your managed code-based applications. So let me go to my target folder. 
and let me connect uh, to my target environment. First of all, because I want to show you that you can use the get PMP provisioning template command letter, and you can specify that you want to use the 2018-01 schema version. By doing that, you will extract a template which will be already in the new schema format. Let me stress this information. Right now, if you don't specify the schema uh, argument, you will get 2017-05. But if you want to start playing with the new schema, just use the schema um, argument, and you will be ready to play with it, because it's, it is already available at the engine level. It is not the default one. That's the difference. Moreover, I want to create a new modern site using the new PMP site command let that we uh, released, uh, I think, was last month, if I'm not mistaken. And I will use this new modern site that I will create, that I'm going to create right now, to do some uh, provisioning. So while the command let is doing the uh, provisioning of the site, which usually takes just a few seconds, let me show you. Uh, a provisioning template that I'm going to apply to this uh, site. So I will show you what's inside the demo01 file. Here we have a very simple provisioning template in which we have at the tenant level the provisioning of a package, which will be a package of a, a custom uh, uh, Hello World web part built using the SharePoint uh, framework. And we have uh, at the template level the provisioning in the app lifecycle management of the same package in order to install the web part defining this package into the target site. As you can see here, we can play with tokens. So I install this package in the app catalog, and then I say use the application package ID of that package to install it in the target site collection. So let me do that, because my site now is ready and well created. So let me get the URL of my site. Let me copy it to the clipboard. I'm so lazy when I do that. And let me show you the site in my browser. This is a new site I've just created. Let me go to the site contents, and I will, I am already in the classic view. So back to PowerShell, I can connect to the site that I've just created, and I can apply the provisioning template that I showed you. Let's do that. As you will see, there will be one section dedicated to the tenant settings. Pretty soon it will uh, show up, and later on the application lifecycle management section. Here we are at the tenant settings level. If I go back to my browser while it is working, here I have my app catalog, and if I will refresh the content of my app catalog, here you can see I have the new package which I have just installed using the provisioning engine. Moreover, if I go back, now the application lifecycle management was working, so let me go back to my site, let me refresh the site content, and as you can see, the application package is under installation. So now we are installing the package in the target site collection. As soon as the package will be ready, we, we can also install or use, better use the, uh, for example, the web part that I have defined in this package in a custom client site page. So let me show you one more template. Here I'm going to create a client side page which will be the sample.aspx file, in which I will use a canvas control to render a custom client-side web part, which is exactly the one I have in this project, which is the one I uh, deployed in the app catalog. And if we go here, this is the ID that I'm using in the provision template. So basically, I'm just creating a page with the client-side web part that I created inside of the sample page.aspx file. It is installed now, so let me go back to PowerShell and let me apply this template. Again, as you saw, I have to wait for the package to be fully installed in the site collection. Uh, most likely, the next month or the month later, we will be ready to have uh, a technique to uh, define a sequence of steps so that we can wait for the package to be ready and we can create uh, the page afterwards. Right now, I executed two different, uh, I used two different templates. Now I have my sample page, and if I go there, I can see that I have my page with my custom web part, uh, which I have been deployed using the provisioning engine. 
Of course, you can even do the opposite. So you can use the get PMP app command, command let to get a reference to the package that we installed. And you can use uh, one more template to remove the package from the site. Let me show you the content of the template. Here we say, OK, get the app package with the ID equals to the parameter that we have uh, in the template definition, and just uninstall the package. And we can provide the parameter using the parameters argument of the apply PMP provision template. Moreover, once we have done that, we can also remove from the app catalog with the remove action the full package in order to clean up uh, the site collection app catalog. I will not do that right now just for the sake of uh, uh, saving some time because we are running out of time. But basically, you can use the provisioning engine to fully automate uh, the ALM of your solutions. And so now you can do a full provisioning of a site, including uh, custom packages from SharePoint framework or from the SharePoint uh, add-in model. And I think it is really, really cool. Uh, that's all for this uh, short demo about the new ALM capabilities at the engine level, Visa. So back to you. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Paolo, for that one. And we are running slow on time, uh, unfortunately. It's always the thing. There's just so many things to to talk about. Maybe in the future we need to slightly adjust the intro section, um, or then think about doing more detailed uh, demos always on the special interest group calls. Now. Thank you, Paolo, for a super helpful uh, demo around the okay. upcoming changes. And like Paolo pointed out, uh, I'm going to flip on the demo slide. So like Paolo pointed out, this is now the preview of the 1809, 1801, uh, so January 2018 uh, uh, schema template. Uh, so it's not the default schema, what is being used. There were some few questions on the on the ion window which i wanted to quickly address uh before we close up so there was a question around where do we actually talk about these uh things uh, and the upcoming provisioning schema changes and all of that the answer is typically in a special interest group course also in the sharepoint uh, general development or the CSM or PowerShell special interest group call. So we always go through what are we planning to do and show the schema thinking and then uh, take your input on it. Uh, we also collect input through the GitHub uh, repository, uh, the GitHub repos issue list and all of that because we want to get people uh, well, if we're missing an, a functionality in the provisioning schema, we absolutely wanted to get it there. After these latest changes, we are really running, starting to run low on an ideas. Uh, what do we need to actually implement on the provisioning schema? So we kind of a coverage. We have a pretty high coverage on the on the web object level at least. There's some things maybe in a tenant level which we can still address, but really, really uh, high level of coverage uh, from a season perspective. Anyway, I think uh, this is uh, that's it for this monthly community call. Uh, thank you for everybody for joining. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your contributions. Like uh, mentioned when in the intro section, we had the record amount of contributors uh, in the SharePoint uh, Dev ecosystem side for this month, which is a, a really, really nice uh, to see. So it's a growing interest around the community and open source work. But please keep uh, the feedback coming using the issue lists and uh, other social media channels. Please, please, please um, let us know if something is missing, where you need help, where you need uh, assistance uh, to be successful with uh, SharePoint development. But thank you, everybody and we'll be absolutely in touch uh, in upcoming days and weeks and uh, see you hopefully latest on the January monthly community call. Thank you.